so. <clears throat> I'm going to go out there and share something with you all, okay? Uh, if you've been following this journey, you know that I've been on a manifestation, uh, growth, development, um, direction. I'll just say head in our direction. And so, um, I had been experiencing for about two years a very difficult situation involving one of my own. All right, I don't want to go into details, too many details and too many specifics. But let's just say involving situations that would have very much to do with child support, etc., etc. And let's just say that, you know, my firstborn is involved and, um, you know, was away from me for said years, okay? And, you know, I kind of didn't have any, it happened without regard as to whether I was accepting or not. All right, that's all I'm going to put out there on that. So, I can't explain to you what it feels like to experience what I've experienced the last two years. Uh, I I don't I don't even know of a pain or type of pain I'll say um, that I could compare that feeling to. All right, I don't even know. I can't even explain to you. Um, you know, I understand, you know, em uh, excuse me, I understand relationships don't work out. I understand there are uh, feelings involved in that situation, in those type of situations. I understand there are separate families that are at odds with each other, have differences of opinion. Everybody feels that they're right. And I'll even go as far as to say everybody feels like they're acting in the best interest of the child, but with their own perspective, uh, you know, being the most important, obviously, right? It's a biased or a skewed viewpoint. I understand all of that. Um, but again, there is, there's just no pain like it, okay? to be without yours. And so, I would say a good 80% of my drive uh, for trying to figure out the best way to put this without, you know, stating the unnecessaries. Uh, a great part of my ambition, um, my drive to improve self, to grow, um, to take an honest self-evaluation, all of those things, right, is my child. Is It, it was my... my my oldest child. Um, and so I wanted to just focus on getting myself in a position that would be most conducive to me being a better individual. You know, I'm not saying that I was doing everything perfect and this is unjustly happening to me and all. that's not what I'm saying. I'm speaking more to the realization that this is a pain. This is, this hurts. This is, you know, it's a piece, it literally is a piece of me that has gone missing, that has been taken away, you know? So I, does it really matter whether I'm 
the best person, I'm still dad. I'm still the father of the child. I've been in the child's life, all of the child's life, with the exception of the last two years, right? So don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying I didn't make mistakes. I didn't do things wrong, you know, learning curves and all that kind of stuff as a, as a new father. That was my, my firstborn. Um, but again, does that really matter when it comes? Is, is, are there any p perfect parents out there? You know, who, who have done no wrong, made, you know, bad decisions and choices and all that kind of stuff. You know, so anyways, I, I digress. So the point of the matter is, is I've been focusing because I, I, I didn't have any other option, right? This was, it was out of my control. So that pain, you know, that I've been experiencing has kind of pushed me into, you know, this mindset. Again, it's, you know, I said that's about 80%. So the other 20% is just realization that you know, I want to live a healthier life. I want to, you know, smoke and drink and, I, you know, that's, you know, abusing that. That's it's unnecessary. It's not conducive to a healthy future. And uh, I have goals and aspirations for all of my children. All right. And so I want to be here. And so that's a, that's that should be driving itself. And. I had to for these last two years, I had to settle for the fact that I may perish, I may die and never uh, have a relationship with my, you know, 13 year old daughter and that she may never have a relationship with her father. Um, you know, being that she was out of state, you know, quite a distance away. And I had to deal with that. And I had to tell myself, there's nothing you can do about it. It is what it is. You know, are you going to uh, allow this situation to jeopardize your freedom? In other words, are you going to go psycho? Are you going to start chasing after you know, going to find her and stalking and all, you're gonna do, do all that? Is that what the, you know, you're gonna succumb to that? And what benefit is that going to do for your children, your other children, you know? So obviously that's not the move, you know? That's just the, the natural father in me that wanted to do these things, but I knew that wasn't the move. I knew I, that you're not gonna win that battle. And so again, I had to settle for it. I had to say, I had to suck it up. And that was the hardest. I mean, this is, this has affected me on every level possible. As a, as a man, you know, unimaginably, I've thought some of the worst things uh, in my mind. You know, I have, and uh, I. It's only by the grace of the universe, and you know, and because of my my children, that I did not act on those uh, thoughts. You know. So, um, so, so with that being said, I've, I'm on this journey of manifestation to holistically improve and better myself um, on every level. And no matter what, to deal with all of the situations uh, in my life and not allow them to rule over me, but instead I need to rule them. And so that is a decision I have made. And because of that decision, I was willing to just 
walk away and let my daughter be. Let her go with the hope. With the hope. Hope means anticipation with pleasure by definition. Um, with the anticipation, the pleasurable anticipation that one day, perhaps in the next four or five years, she will turn 18 and she will seek me out. That's, that's the hope that I had. I had settled for that. There was nothing, it was all out of my hands. There was nothing I could do about it. You know, I didn't want to, you know, involve police and sending police and, you know, Amber alerts. I didn't want to do all that. I didn't want to do all that. I didn't want to do all that. Because I just didn't feel like that would do um, the mother any justice or, or, or any good. And I didn't believe that it would do my daughter any good. And I didn't th think it was going to do us any good, my, me and my family. So I had to bite that one. And I just, again, said, I, I, I'll, have, I'll have to wait. I'll have to wait uh, till she's 18 and she makes her decision or 17 or whatever. And so that's what I did. Hardest freaking battle ever. Let me tell you, ever. And so again, I'm on this journey of manifestation. And I told you, I want, I want this journey to mean something. I don't want this journey to just be another YouTube uh, clickbait platform, you know, pretending you know, to be addressing the situation, but really just out for pushing likes and all that, all that kind of stuff. I, di I didn't want, that's not what I set out to do. So it is day 24. I have thought about my daughter every day for two years, wondering if I'll ever get to see her again, wondering if she is safe, you know, wondering if she'll hate me in the future. You know, wondering if she'll, you know, meet her first boyfriend and he'll be nice to her or disrespectful because her dad's not there or something to that effect. All of these thoughts daily have gone through my head daily, hourly. And I've always had to suppress them as best as possible so that I did not drive myself insane. And so, listen y'all. I'm just going to tell you, this manifestation thing is legit, it is real, and when you're serious about it, it's going to work, it's going to happen. So last week, I think it was last week or this weekend, something set in my spirit to Google the name of uh, my daughter's mom. And I did, I just off the humbug. And it led me down a rabbit trail to where I was able to find out the actual state after two years. And I had found the street and I, knowing the age of my daughter and knowing the approximate, you know, grade she would be in, I looked for the neighborhood school. And, you know, and so my intent was, just being honest and transparent, was to reach out to the school and to express that I do have a court order 
and sh and have custody. Shared shared custody. And that I would like to be involved in my daughter's uh, life. Had nothing to do with trying to get in contact with her mother. Just my daughter. That's it. Which is my right, legally. But I didn't do that. I didn't get a chance to do that. And I had to question myself, is this the right thing to do? I don't want to be looked at as a stalker. I don't want to be looked at as I'm, you know, uh, being a pest or... You know, any of that. That's not what I was after. I've never been after that. I was at, I want to legitimately be in my daughter's life. I want to, I want her to grow up with her father like she's done uh, for 11 or so years of her life previous to her leaving. That's all I wanted. And so, fast forward to today. I didn't act on anything uh, this weekend or whatever, but I did intend to. And I I would ask inwardly. I was I was act, asking inwardly. Now let's let's just before I put the ice on the cake. I know this is going long, but isn't it worth it? Is it not? So check this out. I have conveyed that the steps of manifestation that I can I contend that there are six or I argue there are six and those six start with number one which is um, observation observation what are you looking at what are you looking at what what are you what are you seeing number 2 it, uh is what are you wondering about what are you questioning what what have what do you have an interest in so you see it and it causes a wonderment and an interest number 3 is um, you uh, envision it, right? Envision it. Number four, or well, envision means to form a vision inwardly about that thing. So, can I say that? Obviously, if I've, I've observed my daughter. Obviously, every day, every day, every freaking day. Have I wondered, expressed an interest in my daughter? You know, what would it be like if she was here? What must she look like? What must her, her I can envision what her voice sounds like as she's changing, going through the stages of a young lady, you know? She left as 11 year old. You know, I, I envisioned all of that. And then number four is to dream it. You know, I have regular daydreams about her, about what it would be like to, to hug her now as a, as a 13 year old, as opposed to 10 and 11. What would it be like? What would it be like to, you know, smell, you know, her cologne or her perfume, excuse me that she might be particular to, you know, this is my flesh and blood, you know? What would, this, what would it be like? So dreaming about it, daydreaming or night dreaming. And then number five is to um, be divinely persuaded um, that the object or the situation uh, would be profitable, all right? It would be beneficial and profitable to me. Well, obviously, that goes without saying. Number five. And then number six, finally, is to write it down, transcribe it, reduce it to writing. Um, yeah, 
to reduce it to writing. Write the business plan, etc., etc. Okay? So I've written things in my notes, my logs, whatever. I've done all that stuff. So with that being said, and without further ado, I got a an email today. I mean, a text message today. The 24th day of the journey of manifestation. And yes, it was from my daughter. And the message was, I can't because it's on my phone, but uh, it was, Dad, uh, sorry I have not contacted you. My phone has been broken for a week. <laughs> and we moved back to our state last week for about a week now. You know, yeah, I'll talk to you later. 